Welcome back to Super Tuesday Recap. It is Chris and Deepom here. And we're here for another Super Tuesday recap of Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow. We're doing Legends of Tomorrow first. So it's Season 2, Episode 14, Moonshot. The Legends learn where the last fragment of the Spear of Destiny is hidden when they track Commander Steel to the NASA to NASA headquarters in 1970. Um, yeah, man, what do you think? I can't believe how good this show got. <laughs> I'm in shock because you think about last season it was kind of like very uneven episodes the mythos was kind of hard to get through this show every week anytime we have a quibble or a qualm or a question it seems to answer it immediately part of it last week was how are we going to reconcile uh, Rip is no longer being captain and they don't they don't just hint at it they deal with the whole thing in this episode Right, right, and the, um, the Amaya yeah. and Nathan, the Nate thing, like mm -hmm. they pushed that plot forward, a plot that we weren't interested in. I care about now. Mm -hmm. They did a great. Everything was so well balanced in this episode. I, I'm really just kind of at a loss. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's one of the great things that's happened between, um, again, and we said this about. I, I think overall this week, I don't. We haven't talked about Arrow yet, but I think overall this week, this is this is a week where I feel like all the CW shows I'm, I'm watching right now. Did a really good job all at once, and um, again, you might have small things here and there, but even this week with the Flash, I mean, we we we've been having some problems. We watch into the Speed Force, and we go, "Oh, wait, they they answered a lot of the questions we were having, and they're dealing with it." Okay, um, and in this episode, same thing. Like, I love the fact that they immediately go in and deal with the you know Captain Hunter being back, and us and everybody else going, but Sarah is so much better of a captain. Like, like, like this, she better not back down. You better not make it so that Rip becomes captain again, because she's so much better at this than he is. And by the end of the episode, you get him admitting that you get him saying that it's not coming back and seeing somebody else be captain of my ship. It's coming back and see somebody who's so much better of a captain than I ever was. And I'm like, thank God. <laughs> thank God you're admitting that because you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, hell, it kind of gave me a lot more respect for Rip's character because I was like, okay, well, now I've got more questions. And now I'm really curious to see what the hell is next. Yeah. I mean, I mean, first I was just like, oh, okay, it's going to be awkward and weird. And he just finally says, you're better this night. Right. And I'm trying to figure out my role in the team now. She's like, well, you're just a legend now. You're, you're right along with the rest of us now. And, and, when you think about it, it's like that's the only way this would have worked. It's the only thing that makes sense because, like you said, she's become so much better at the team. Um, and and I love that it's not just us, the audience, noticing this. Um, Commander Steel noticed this. He go, he doesn't know that Sarah is the one. He knows nothing about what's happened with Rip this season. So right. when he sees Rip and they're talking, he's like, man, you know. Last time we saw you and came across you guys, man, you guys were terrible. Like your team and everything you guys have done, like you guys were not good at this whatsoever. So, um, yeah, you really whipped him into shape and you did a good job. And he's like, Rip's like, yeah, that, that really wasn't me. And it makes you go back and think about how we've seen this season. And you're like, we've noticed it too, but like, no, they really have come together. They really, like, Sarah has literally whipped them into shape into being a well-oiled machine that uses teamwork, gets themselves out of sticky situations, and we keep talking about how they always seem to lose, but that was season one. Season two, they've actually kind of been doing all right. You know, they, they have some stumbles here and there, but overall, they've been doing so much better under Sarah, and... I guess it's just it's it's nice to see that this was all by design because in a, in, a, in a show that's not good, what would happen is you'd get to a point where um, the temporary captain is just temporary. And you're like, we got to find some way to bring the real captain back, and right. nobody wants that. Here, they they're not doing that. I mean, maybe at some point something happens and Rip has to take over again, but. Right now, they seem to be addressing the fact that, no, Sarah is better at this. And the thing I love about this, too, is this is something we all knew in season one. <laughs> right. This is something we were all begging for. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah. So Captain Sarah Lance, right? Because she's, she's better at this than Rip, right? We're, we're noticing this, right? It was like one episode, and we're like, wait, she's so much better at this than Rip. So are they going to? Yeah. And, yeah, 
I think that was just that was really great. So, um, I'm I'm surprised you did miss the the. I think uh, you haven't you haven't mentioned you didn't lead with. I think the most important thing about this episode though, uh, we we got we got Mick doing the opening again. Oh, I was waiting. I was gonna. I was that was my closer. I was like, look, this <laughs> is further proof that Mick Rory is the voice of the people. <laughs> look, look, I, I think we finally established everybody's role on the legends at this point, right? Uh, Mick is definitely doing the opening. Sarah's a captain. Jax is a co-captain. <laughs> you know, I think, I mean, that's that's really all you really need from there. Everybody else can just fall in the line. But th- those are the three right there, roles that have already filled. No need for anybody else to do any competition. Everybody else can fight over whatever's left over. Because, um, yeah. <laughs> that is just... things. We scream up worse. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what you do. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mick. Like, it's, it's just, everything in that voice is just great. Like, I like when they, they show up in the mission control, and they're like, what does he do? He's, he's, yeah. Like, and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, no, wait, why is Mick there? Like, that's the last person you want around sets of equipment in mission control at NASA. Kind of, yeah. I'm yeah. actually okay with, Chris, with, with him being there. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. have to make sense. You say what? It doesn't have to make sense. I just need someone, I need a wild card. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. <laughs> it's always his have a wild card. Uh, yeah, and and he is definitely a wild card. The so. definition. The definition of a wild card, yo. But um, no, no, I, I like how they they did this episode. Another thing I really liked about this episode. So, um, we get we're, we're back with Thawne, and, and Thawne's here, and he's uh, replaced one of the astronauts on uh, Apollo thirteen. And so, right there, you found a way to neutralize the speed because I mean, obviously, you can't, you know can't run if you're in there's no gravity so I mean, that right makes sense okay it's kind of brilliant yeah it was, it was like it's a brilliant way because i'm thinking to myself i'm like uh yeah so as soon as you spot a ray i'm like ray you're a fucking moron god damn it but right yeah just come on um but what really what i really loved about about putting ray and i never thought about this again i think the cw shows are are, are at their best when they find good pairings when pairings yeah. you didn't think about so pairing Ray with Thawne in a situation where they both have to work together um, makes you realize that once again, Thawne is a scientist and Ray is a scientist. So mm-hmm. you then get, you know, Ray trying to be all high and mighty. And then Thawne goes, you could literally power an entire city with the power in your suit. But instead, you decide to be a superhero. <laughs> He's basically like, you you you're talking about me and 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 my choices, and uh, he's not wrong. Yo, it was so great because I was like, huh, okay, all right, that's accurate. Huh. <laughs> Ray, you got some points. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else. I'm to... not in the business of listening to supervillains, but if I were going to start, this would be the way. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, um, and I love, I even love when Thawne uh, brings up the fact that, hey, you know, I, I missed this. I missed working with another scientist, you know, I, you know, I, I did this all that time with, with Caitlin and, and Cisco and, and even Barry, like I, I did all of that and it was nice to have a team. It was nice to, to, to have some companionship and, 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 and do these things. And you're thinking to yourself, it just makes Thawne. You know he's a supervillain. And I'm not even going to go with right. the Thawne. I'm, I'm not. I know everybody knows my villain agenda. I'm not going with Thawne is right and stuff like that. But not yet. Not yet. But I'm just saying, like, he was making some really good, strong arguments and points here. And it, and it was almost humanizing him. Because even when he told, told Ray, it's like, listen, I'm trying to keep myself from being erased from history. Yeah. That is what I'm doing. It's a, you know what, and, and, and as far as evil plans go, there are much, much more evil things to do. This is Damien Dark tried to blow up a city. <laughs> he did blow up a city. True. He blew up a city with a nuke. All right. You this know, he's literally fighting to stay alive. Right. Like, and, and that's a, that again, it, it makes you. Villains are always at their best. You know, I'll, we always joke about me and my villain agenda, but villains are always at their best when you feel something for them. 
You know, either either you feel something for them or they're literally just a Terminator that moves forward and cares about nothing. That's it. Like, you need to either go full throttle one way or the other, right? And by humanizing Thawne here, you're, you're kind of making him go, damn, I mean, it, it makes sense. And he's a scientist. When when they, they need to figure out the angle to come in for reentry, and they're like, the computer's down. And, and Ray goes, well, no, technically we do have another one. And he walks in and Thawne's like 38 degrees. It's like, come on, man. I did this... This, this is stuff we study when I'm in school, and you remember, oh yeah, this motherfucker is from the future. I would expect their, well, not in the world of Trump, yeah. but I would expect their schools to be, hopefully, you know, more advanced uh, than us. And um, yeah, I thought that was really, I thought it was really great. I th- I thought that that was a, you know, it it was it was great to see Ray not be an idiot. Yeah. Um. It, it, it's, it's some, it feels like it's been a rarity. Like even when, like last episode, or I guess two episodes ago, when we figured out that Ray's like goofy shit was sometimes actually masking like something smart. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I want to see him be smarter more consistently. Right. You know what? You know what the problem with Ray is on this show. Ray's become be, become the team's Caitlyn sometimes. When mm-hmm. we have that problem with Caitlyn sometimes when they're ex- trying to explain. Like things that Caitlyn should know because she's a fucking scientist working with Star Labs. Um, while while they don't explain things to Ray like that, his goofiness sometimes makes it seem like he's not taking things that should be serious or thinking things through. When it's like, there's no way you got to be Ray fucking Palmer and and not think things through and 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 everything you've gone through. We've seen everything you've gone through. Come on, man. Like even Felicity. Has gotten has she still has that goofiness to her, but she's matured a little bit because everything she's been doing, she literally got paralyzed. Like, right? Yeah. You lost you 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 became a superhero because you lost your fiance, and you're still being goofy. There are times that when the goofiness is well appropriate, or oh, well appointed. Oh no! Like yeah. when all I get to copy, I'm on the moon. Like I'm like that's he's got a good point. Oh no no! Well, that's fine. Like the the whole yeah. moon thing that because you you know what it was. That was appropriately timed. You're on Very the fucking so. moon, like you, 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 you've knocked out, you've knocked out Thon. He doesn't know that. Uh, he doesn't know what happens to the wave rider, and that they, they they can't bring him back. So at that point, it is actually an appropriately timed goofiness because you're on the fucking moon. <laughs> you know. So I, I I allow things like that. It's like when um, or even if he's using this goofiness to try to mask uh like. Uh, uh, something serious like Felicity does that sometimes when you know she's trying to be goofy but you know that she knows it's serious and she's trying to avoid you know the seriousness of something uh, but she knows that it is ser- and she, she switches on yeah. I, I, like Ray and I know he can do it because we've seen it before I just think that sometimes they have a hard time writing consistently but again the way he was written this episode I actually love it I think it was, it was a great balance for that I think. right great balance for that part, I think part of the problem is that the archetype he fills in the team is already filled by Stein mm-hmm. yeah because Stein doesn't really have the, the flexibility to do anything else in the show so you've got to play up Ray's goofiness but you're right this was the first time in a while we've gotten that balance out of him and that's a Ray I actually liked right um, I also love I love the fact that and, 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 you know, we, we talk about finding people's roles in these shows and, and CW and, and and how sometimes they seem to struggle with stuff like that. I, I think we really need to give Legend of Tomorrow credit for one role I think they've done. I mean, obviously, people like Sarah Lance, they've done a really good job with Mick and things like that. But, yo, Jax has been really consistently well written mm-hmm. on this show. I think both seasons. And especially this season, they really have given him something to do. So he's really become the mechanic of, of the wave rider. And that's something that if you told me when he was there, I, you were literally on a ship with a full of a bunch of geniuses. W- what is this kid? Cause he's, he's literally a kid. What is this kid going to do other than be, you know, the main part of firestorm? What's he going to do? I find that they have more for, for Jax to do than sometimes than Stein. Like, I feel like sometimes they struggle, like you said, because Stein and Stein and Ray kind of feel that same archetype. I feel like they sometimes struggle to figure out if they do one uh, really well for one of them. Like Stein, other than, I know you're gonna like his singing, but other than that, what was he really doing this episode? 
Well, you know, I think that, yeah, you're right. They have to kind of take him off the board a little bit. Right. And, and I think that's fine. But, like, with Jax, though, like, he's always had something to do. He's, I mean, this time he's, like, he's found a way to to to, to go in and, 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 and turn off the signal in this. And, again, I, we're going to say there, oh, well, it's old technology. Yeah, that's probably even worse for him. Because <laughs> it's like, right. how the fuck are you going to do that? So, I, I think that was really well done, and I'm 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 really impressed by how they've ridden him consistently. He's had a good arc, you know his his stuff with Rip, um, the scenes when they go back in time, and they're you know they're in like slavery time, like th- that was a really good uh, episode with him and and his character and things like that. So yeah, I mean they've done a really really good job with Jax, and uh, I, I'm I've been impressed. Yeah, man, I, I think that. Part of this reason the show is so good and this episode was so good is because things like that with you mentioned with Jax, where everyone's got a purpose, everything has a everything has its place on this show. Mm-hmm. I never feel like something is just happening to happen. Even when they're sidelining characters like Mick and, and Stein, they've they've done it with the backstory of the last four or five missions of pairing those two together mm-hmm. so that the dynamic doesn't feel forced or weird at all. Right. They play off each other, they're able to improvise in the field, and they're able to keep the plot moving forward. It's been it's really telling that this show is able to balance the things that we like about it, like the sensational stuff and like the kind of more comic booky aspects and still have the character growth for everyone still have the, the, the core characters mattering the most in Sarah and mo- I mean, mostly Sarah, it's mostly her show, mm-hmm. but everyone gets growth. Yeah. And everyone gets change, but it never feels like a weight. It feels like, I don't know. It feels like, and it's not strange to say, but for a CW, I'm actually enjoying everything I'm, watching yeah what i mean is i love arrow but that shit is dark yeah <laughs> i like the flash this season has been dour as hell to the point where i was like yeah gorillas attack that was kind of okay like it's been just very downtrodden and this seems the writing staff and the actors seem to revel in the the ridiculousness of we're going to go participate in the apollo 13 mission right <laughs> that's a ridiculous thing right <laughs> Um and like uh, and, and they, they they still get some really powerful moments like I said, you know we, you mentioned before the the Nate Henry and and, and and figuring out the the Nate Amaya thing this episode like that was, again like you said when we first happened we were both like oh, God damn it again and I and I do think this I think all the CW shows need to find a better way of handling growth with especially their female characters and not relying on them getting into a relationship. Having said that. I think the way that they're doing this and cleaning this up, I don't want to say cleaning up, the way they're handling it right now, I can get behind. You know? They're retroactively making me appreciate it. Right. I, I can appreciate this now. I mean, first you get, uh, I mean, when you, we all saw the, the clip of when, when Henry hit um, uh, Rip, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? And then you find out, like, he's thinking to himself he about going home, and then Nate's like, yeah, that'll be great. You can go home, and then my dad won't be a dick anymore. And, and then because you know he grew up without a father, and, and maybe he'll be nicer to me and more understanding. And it sounds great. And then in the back of your mind, you're going, wait a minute, wait a minute. If that happens, maybe you don't become the Nate Haywood you are today. And then maybe you don't save the legends when you need to. You can't do that, you know. And I think that is the, the the best thing about it is it's not somebody like Stein or somebody else coming. That it's Amaya telling him this. And then you're like, oh, but you don't know that that's the same thing that's happening with you, though. Because that means you and Nate can't be together because your village has to be destroyed. And (laughs) your daughter has to take over the mantle. Like, she has to, like, oh, man. Like, the way they handled that, like, it was real. You know, it made sense. I actually think they handled this a little bit better. And, and I, I I grew to appreciate the the Stein thing with his daughter, but I think this was handled way better. And there was only one episode you had to handle in it, really. And yeah, I, well, actually, I, not I, even I, one episode because we don't know because because we have to see because Amaya then goes and and, and 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 sees at the end sees what happens to her village and what what happens. The thing with her is though, I believe with just like how Henry sacrificed himself, I believe Amaya will end up leaving and going back to her village because oh, I feel she's like a hero. Exactly. That's what the GSA These other guys are, are outcasts and legends and blah, blah, blah. She's a, a true blue hero. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like what they were saying. It's like, you know, um, Henry would have done this regardless if he knew he could, he should go back or not. 
because that is that is what he does. I mean, that is that is what the GSA, uh, and, and we're we're down to the part where all the GSA dies. <laughs> They've all died so far, you know. And sacrifice, well, except for Star Girl, she didn't. I think she lived. Um, but they've all sacrificed themselves and sacrificed, and they've all, if you think about it, they've all sacrificed. So they all sacrificed moving to leaving their time periods to be put in these other time periods to protect a piece of the sphere. So, you know, like you said, they've all made these sacrifices because they needed to, because like you said, they're heroes. And, um, right. I think that was a really, those were some really powerful and really strong moments, uh, there in an episode that, Honestly, should have been goofy. You know, <laughs> they're going to the moon. They're joining the Apollo 13 mission. Are you fucking kidding me? That's goofy as shit. And they're like, yeah, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to tug at your heartstrings a little bit. So, right. Yeah. No, and I, they're still going to do that. And, and, and pull off what you said, the other goofy show. And the, that's, a, that's a lot, ability of balance that you don't see in a lot of shows. Right. Right. Um, other thing too, I thought there was uh, there's small things they they throw in here. Um, so uh, Rip Hunter's uh, speedster anti speedster tech was helped develop by Thawne. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're we're one step closer to him getting giddy and apparently. <laughs> yeah. So because at, at some point that has to happen. Like I'm I'm very intrigued by all this and how this is gonna play out. So we got me Karen, man. They got me Karen. Got me caring. Yeah, me too. And uh, it, the, going out, especially, I think part of this, the praise for the show from us is based on what we felt about the first season. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. 100%. You know, after the first season, I was just like, oh, man, I mean, I guess it's okay. I mean, and I think they finished strong in that first season, too. They finished strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wasn't sure how they were going to, they were going to come back. But, um, uh, they fixed. They, they they figured it out, and um, yeah, they they got everything going going pretty good. So, um, anything else you want to say about? Oh, you know, there's one thing I want to say. Uh, I do find it odd that nobody talked about how the Apollo 13 mission went up with three people, but came down with two. We're not gonna talk about that. Okay. Shit happens in space. What do you say? This shit happens in space. Sure, yeah, not a problem. Not a time evolution <laughs> or anything. You know, you. Know, we went up with three of us, but we came down with two. Eh, normal. We never landed on the moon. That's what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. I, but I'll allow it. Everything else was everything else was done so well. I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Um, yeah. So, uh, anything else you want to say about it? No. Really enjoyed the good hour of television. Yep. Definitely really great. So, all right. Let's move on to Arrow season five. Episode 16, Oliver gets closer to the truth about Prometheus. Helix refuses to continue helping Felicity until she does a favor for them. Uh, and this episode is called Checkmate. And um, look here, man. We haven't seen trolling of Oliver like this since Deathstroke. Since season two, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, and I forgot how great it is to have a villain out in the open trolling Oliver. Like, it, it wasn't even Oliver, just the entire team. That scene when Adrian Chase tells Mad Dog, tells, tells him Mad Dog, yeah, you know, I, I saw that report on my desk. 24 hours, dude. Make sure you have it there. No, no, that dude, he looked at me and I said, dog. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Right. No, no. I, what, what, did he call him dog? Or did he call him? La he didn't call him. He called him like Lassie or something like that, or puppy. No, no, uh, someone else called him Lassie. Okay. He calls him dog in the hallway. Yeah. Just <laughs> like, bruh. I was like, oh, sir. Now that I like, this is the perfect move. Like, this is the this is the best way because they literally have. I don't know how you deal with this. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea. What, what, what do we do next? I have no clue. I, I am so confused because, good God, man! Like, he's he's got he's got all the moves. Like, he's got everything, even down to when Oliver goes and is like, "All right, you know, we're gonna check check his house." His wife is there, and they're trying to tell his wife. Um, and he has uh the police show up, and now it makes it like the Green Arrow is trying to retaliate against the district attorney. And so Oliver has to go there and say that if the Green Arrow doesn't turn himself in in 24 hours, he's ordering the <laughs> he's ordering the 
He's ordering them to shoot, shoot him on sight. Like, like, it's like, come shoot me, guys. Right. It's just like... That level of trolling. Like I said, we haven't seen it since since Deathstroke. Since Deathstroke showed up and like when Oliver walked into his own home and Deathstroke was sitting there talking to and, and Slade is sitting there talking to his mom. <laughs> and then and then Oliver tried to stab him with that ace pick and Slade hits him with the not yet kid. <laughs> dog, that yeah. face with this is dog. And it was Holy shit, man. I could watch an I, and I did. I, that, that was it for me in the entire episode. That, <laughs> like that I mean, everything else, hey, yeah, we can talk about it, but that was it. Just watching this like in Oliver and him being one step ahead of Oliver at every turn. Yep, I already thought about that. And even when Oliver finally gets him, it's like, oh, we'll bring his wife here and we'll do that. And and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Oliver, you do know he's gonna kill her, right? I'm like, this ends with one thing. Yeah. Bloody wife. Yeah, he's going to kill her. That's not going to work. He's not going to maybe kill her. He's not going to think about it. He's going to kill her. Right, because he's not like you. That's the difference. But that tells you exactly what like, Chase is, is, as they say, about that life. Yeah, you're not. He is. You're not. And it's fine. You don't have to be. It's probably for the best that you're not, but recognize that you're dealing with someone that very much is. Right. Um. And, and you know what thing that this uh, uh this episode... And I guess this entire season is really nailed home. And then when you think about it with, um, like, I actually think that, and maybe, I don't know, they moved Legends of Tomorrow to Tuesday. And um, I'm not sure, maybe eventually we'll see some some overlap. And I guess because, you know, Thawne is on Legends of Tomorrow, we'll see something there between Flash and Legends of Tomorrow there. But to me, like, Flash and Arrow really should be almost back-to-back because the season of Flash is basically... Barry learning not to not to depend on other people and to do shit for himself. Like you are the Flash, you are Barry Allen. You can do it on your own. Yes, you have a team. Yes, you need to, but you need to believe in yourself in order to get this stuff done because you don't seem to believe in yourself enough. You seem to believe in everybody else trying to save you and help you, and not yourself. Right? You always need that pep talk, but you're you are you're a hero, Barry. You need to go out there and do it. This is an arrow. Is basically the other thing. It's it's them trying to teach Oliver and tell Oliver. Yes, you are a hero. Yes, you can do everything by yourself, but you don't have to. You have a team. You have everybody around you, and you know your team and not your weakness. So that that you know the Daddy Diggle talk that that he gives Oliver, where he's basically like, hey, you know, you're look, you can't look at the people around you and the people that you let in as a weakness. We're your strength. We're the people that are going to be there and have your back. You know, because Oliver was very on some. Hey, listen, I let Susan Williams in. I should never have done that. Now she's being used against me. And and Dill kept going like, dude, man, you're human. You can't sit there and go through the rest of your life with no human contact. Right. You can't do that. And so I, I like the, you know, I know it. It, it, it was. I, I think this entire season you can feel that for Arrow. I know with Flash has been kind of a little bit weird with their pacing of of the episodes, but with Arrow you can definitely you've seen that theme throughout this entire season of. Hey Oliver, you need to do something new. Trust your team. He's gotten to that point. Now he's facing the enemy who's calling that into question. Is right. it worth me actually doing that? So, yeah, man, I, yeah, and like you said, I don't know how this fucking ends. It they've set it up so well, and let's just get this out of the way right now. This is the second time in two weeks they've used our existing knowledge of DC Comics against us. Because we assumed that, of course, he'd know who Talia was. Mm-hmm. Because for us, of course, he's Talia al Ghul. Right. Why is that even a question? Right. It never occurred to us to say, why the hell would Ali know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it does. And I'll be, I'll be honest. If you look at it too closely, it doesn't hold up. Like, he had enough dealings with the al Ghul family where he should have known about a second daughter. Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah. But from a long view, from just like a wide lens... Works perfectly, and it again, like they did with the Adrian Chase thing, they subverted our knowledge mm-hmm. and used it against us, right? And then you go, like, as soon as she starts talking, you're like, Why would you do that? And I'm like, Oh, Oliver, you killed her daddy, and um, yeah, that's you that. didn't know it was her daddy, yeah. So, oh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking, of, I know, I know one way it, I, it might not go, but I kind of hope they do. This is the way you bring Nissa back in, mm hmm. Cause I'm like, and I, actually, I feel like this is, I feel like you got to, right? I, I feel like at some point you got to bring Nissa back in on this, right? Cause 
<laughs> all he needs backup. Right. It's like, yeah, you killed her dad, but uh, Nissa kind of had your back on that Nissa one. Nissa helps. Yeah, Nissa helps. Nissa helped. She, she, you know, she kind of had your back on it. And we do know there's a split in the family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, that's one way, like, if, if yeah, I'm saying this now. If you don't call Nissa back in on this one, I'm going I'm to I'm still enjoy this season. And I'm probably still enjoy what happens, but I feel like you got to bring Nissa in on this one. Just because also she's a badass and I just love oh, yeah. her So it's just, yeah. But, um. And, and then this versus Talia fight would be it. Dude. <laughs> Listen, I'm all in for Nissa versus Talia. Which, I think, and I think that would make sense. You know? Um, and it would be nice to do. So, yeah. Um, oh, man. Like, it, it just, I, this entire episode is just basically that. It's basically. Oliver chasing his tail and Prometheus pulling them, pulling the strings. And and right when you think like, I knew that whatever Oliver was planning wasn't going to work because right. it's, it's, awesome. it's, it's episode 16. Right. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, sorry, dude. Like, look from Oliver's point of view, I get it. But from an audience point of view, I'm like, Nigga, it's, it's it's episode 16. I think I said out loud, he was like, this is going to be the end. Like, I, was, I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> you got... Yeah, bro, I don't show that. Bro, sorry, buddy. You Unless still... you want to transition into Talia being the big bad, which you could do. But... Yeah, right. Um, I'm like, hey, listen, man. Uh, I, hate to, I, hate, I hate to tell you this, but you still got like six or seven more episodes left, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blow don't blow it your load right now. In a room. Right. It might just be you locked in a room getting tortured. Right. So let's not blow your load just yet, buddy. Um so but uh yeah, man. I mean it, yeah. And, it, and then the worst thing is, so they so yeah, so Adrian Chase's wife dies. Uh yes. they could obviously pin that on the Green Arrow. Um I'm not sure if they did or not, but uh they could obviously do that. Even though Susan Williams is out, though, and I, I look again every time they think they have him. Susan Williams and and, and Quentin are there they're in the police department, and Adrian just pops up out of nowhere and goes, "Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> where, where where y'all think y'all about going? Where, where where y'all going? Oh, you, you're gonna you're gonna turn me in? Ah, uh, well, listen, if you do that, I'm going to." have Oliver's body parts shipped back to you. So uh, how about you guys just keep your mouth fucking shut? What do you say to that other than, okay. Okay, you got it. (laughs) All right, fine. (laughs) I'm just, oh man, like, the only question I have between uh, Talia and 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 uh, and Adrian Chase slash what was what was his real name Simon? I can't remember what the real name was. It does not matter. doesn't matter. Um, was uh the where's Artemis? Where's Evelyn? <laughs> like, where did her to be dead? Where, where, her body to pull out of the closet? Where is she in all this? Because it's just like, what? How? Where did she? Huh? Okay, she just disappeared. All right. Fuck it. Fine. It'd All be right. so easy for you to give me just one scene of her yelling at Prometheus, demanding her vengeance. You promised me I could have this, and him turning around, just slitting her throat and turning back around, <laughs> right? And being done with it. Just acknowledge that it happened, right? Just I legit, <laughs> until you mentioned it, I had legitimately forgotten about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I only reason why I remembered it because I, I think uh, Joe said something about it in the in, in the uh, NVR Network group. Like he didn't do any spoilers, but he was just like he was like, I just got you know, I really like this episode of of, of Arrow, but I just got one question. Where the fuck is Artemis? And I was like, huh? Like I I I I I, I remember that post from like Wednesday, and I didn't think about it until I finished the episode. And I was like, huh? He's right. Where the fuck is she? <laughs> I mean, if they've at least given you a, a you know understanding of where Thea is and what's going on with that. But it's like, oh no, she literally betrayed the team and then just fucking disappeared. So huh, fuck it. <laughs> Okay. Banished. <laughs> Banished. <laughs> smoke bomb. Gone. Man, man, she didn't even do a smoke bomb. She just... She, she, she pulled a Judy Winslow. She walked to the fucking stairs and never came back down. <laughs> never mentioned. My God. We're going to see her doing porn later on. Oh, <laughs> For those who don't get that reference, just go. 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 Just do some research. On <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, Felicity... This is gonna end all bad, all bad. But I like her doing it, man. No, I do. No, I do. They've given her something to do. No, no, don't get wrong. I'm loving what they're doing with her now. 
I'm just saying this ends horribly for you. This is you like, know what I'm hoping for, right? What are you hoping for? You know, Tim uh, in the Android Robin Run admits that he when he hacks Rachel's computer system, he built in a back door for himself. Mm-hmm. I'm really hoping that she covertly at the end of the season. Oh, since I've been helping, you, I've also been taking you down. Uh, yeah, I would love I, I would love her to solve this problem without anyone's help. No, I, and and I think we've talked about this before. That's my yeah. only concern. I like I would love for all of us, the audience, to think she's in over her head, and then her at the very end be like. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm really fucking smart. Right. Right. Like th- that's what I want. Like if they do that then and, and again, I just, I'm with you. I love them giving her something to do. I even love the fact that when she when she finally shows up and Oliver sits down and talks to her, we were just like, you know, and she was like, "Oh yeah, you're going to give me, you know, you know, all the stuff we're talking about." He's like, "Yo, no, I'm you're not my employee. You can come and go as you please." Uh, I'm just concerned and I'm hoping that you're not in over your head. And so, and I want, like you said, I want her to be able to solve this problem on her own, you know? Um, and, and if that comes with some demons that she has to work with later on, then so be it. But just like John, right. All the better for just like John, like John's the one that shot his own brother. He made that decision. He's the one that, yeah, sure. It was tied to a long, a larger issue, but you know, she, yeah. So, I'm, 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 I'm with you on this one. I like, I like that they're doing it. I like they're giving her something to do. I, I really hope that they, um, they have her solve her own problem, and that they don't make her, um, you know, so weak that she has to depend on somebody else to, to solve this problem for her. So, we'll see. Like I said, I'm, I'm hoping for that. Um, and uh, I love uh, they're, they're we're now going full T spirit. Two spheres. We were just naive. Yo, like it was like it was nothing. We've been begging for this. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm just. They delivered. They delivered very well. I was impressed. Because, <laughs> you know, he blew him up last time we saw him. So I was like, oh, yeah. man, are we never going to see him again? Oh, no. You just going to keep making him. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's even better. Even better. You know, like using them to using them to. uh uh, severe the house and stuff like that. Like, yes, that that is what you use them for, and I, that yeah. is the ideal use of these things. You know, helping uh, using them to to help get uh, Freya, uh, Renee, and um, uh, Dinah. So, like, yeah, man, I'm 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 all in on that one. I loved how they handled that. Uh, yeah, I, this show was found. Now that we've kind of paired away some of the people, again, we 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 had a graceful exit for for Thea. We know what happened with her and what's going on with her. Uh, they were kind of clunky, obviously, with Evelyn and um, what's it, Ragman or whatever. We got room. But See, now that we have this Ragman team. Ragman or whatever. Yeah, or whatever. But now that we've gotten rid of them, we're down to a core team that we actually care about. They've each mm-hmm. had their own arc. I care more about Dinah than I did ever about uh, Roy or uh, Ragman or, or, or uh, Evelyn. So they've gotten us a Are core Are you in on Dinah? I'm not in on Dinah yet. When you say in on her, what do you mean? I mean, like, I don't really care about her yet. Um, I care about her because of the work they put in earlier and those two seasons okay. when they first introduced her. Um, I know right now they haven't given her a lot to do. And, uh, I think it's because we, we have, you know, we're it's juggling. A full plate. We, yeah, we have a full plate, but I think they did enough, a good enough job that I care more about her than I ever did Ragman. Oh, well that's a low bar to clear, but yeah. And Evelyn. I mean, so it's like. Yeah, she might be the she she might be the one we care about the least on the team. But you got think about it, she's also the newest one on the team, and she's already right. she's a, she's the newest one on the team, and she's already I already care more about her than two people that were on the team for longer than she was. So That's a good point. So yeah, in that case, I'm I'm in on her on that because I think she's I'm gonna give I can I'm gonna give her the same time I gave the other two, you know, and I think she's been more integrated into the team than everybody else has been. You know, she's, she's working on the, in the police department. So she has a job, you know, so she, so she has, a, so she has a, well, she has a reason to be around places. Um, when she's not in costume where the other two right. didn't like, what did, what did they do when they weren't there? You know, I mean, Curtis technically doesn't, but he gets so much more to do now anyway. And he's basically text the police, basically feeling kind of a, you know, a, a Felicity role too. So, and other than giving Felicity the thing that, the field. yeah, tech support in the field. So it's like, everybody has a job now. So I'm good with it. They, they cut some of the dead weight out. And I think what the core team they have now is 
it's something that I honestly think that, and maybe everybody doesn't make it into the season, the next season, but I think everybody could make it into the next season and I'll be fine with it. You know, there's yeah. enough here, enough story here to care about and to work with. Um, that yeah, it makes and, and there's so much you can do with her being a per, um, being a member of the police department and maybe working up the ranks and stuff like that. There's so much you can do with that, and so I'm really interested. Um, also, Pike, the the the, the I guess he's the police chief. Got yeah, or he was. Up. Well, he's not dead yet, so <laughs> yet. Okay. Fair enough. Not dead yet, but I mean, well, yeah. So we'll see. Although, if he dies, you think that's a way to that's an opening to bring Quentin back? Yes. Okay. That's why I said it. I was, I was, yeah. This is Quentin getting back in uh, yeah his spot, yeah. so you can have so now always got help in the police department. Well, so so there's my thing on that. Like, I kind of actually kind of like Quentin in the role he's in now. I'm, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing him back in the police department, although you have to answer for a lot because he literally was a corrupt cop. If you a lot. It. Um, but if you bring Pike back out, Pike could also be that person in the police department now because I think he's kind of figured out that Oliver is the Green Arrow. And when because yeah. remember he got stabbed because Oliver gave him the information about Adrian Chase. So I think Pike can is figuring this stuff out. And I would, I would like that. Like I would, I would actually like it. If Frank Pike becomes the, the comes out of the coma and knows that Oliver is the green arrow, or I, I think you're still like, I think you, you, you've, you've alluded to this. You think we're going to get the, I am Iron Man moment where, where Oliver comes clean about being the green arrow. Yeah. Um, and if that happens, I think you definitely have uh Pike. Uh, it would be nice to have Pike there. So um, yeah, I, and I think that's one of the things I, I do think we, we kind of, are hoping for and seeing coming towards the end of the season is Oliver coming out. Cause wouldn't that be what better way right now? What, what Prometheus is trying to do to Oliver is destroy him, right? Basically make it so that everything he loves and, and, and is trying to protect uh, is, is too much for him. If Oliver queen comes out as the green arrow to everyone, what does Prometheus have anymore? Right. So maybe that's the end game. So, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I, I think that would be, and I think that'll be an interesting dynamic going to the next season, with everybody knowing that Oliver Queen is the Green Arrow. Um, it changes the whole show. Which it, I think it changes all the shows. It maybe does. not Supergirl, but you know what does Barry Allen do then? <laughs> Because you know? Barry's always taking the cues from Oliver, but I think he's learning that he's got to be his own hero. He can't be Oliver. True, Oliver true, Man. true, true. So I'm not saying that uh, Barry comes out, but he he can. So it's different. It's like yeah. I'm the Flash. Like, wait, who are you? Oh, I'm I'm a random lab tech who works downstairs. Right. True. True. I think it's I think the, same, the mayor is greedy. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do think that that's a that's a way larger uh, issue and in, 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 in reveal there. So um, well, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, so. Uh, anything else you want to say about this episode, man? Uh, I think we touched on everything I wanted to touch about. Um, I'm, I, I love with the done with Chase. I love the fact that we finally got the our, our two big bads established. I like that they slow rolled, giving us everything on it. It was a storytelling thing that could have gone wrong if it didn't keep us interested, and they did a very good job in the season of keeping us interested. All right. And, and also, um, are we just gonna forget about vigilance? I was just about to mention that. I was like. It's done now. What's going on? Like, uh, I mean, that's fine. If you want to have him just start showing up randomly in seasons, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm a hundred percent fine with that. I want to ask that many questions, but because I think it'd be interesting for I'll be like, wait, we don't know who this guy is now. I'm about to say, you realize that like someone's got a secret in this town that Oliver doesn't know. Yeah, I'm about to say, what are we in the season when nobody knows who Vig- Vigilante is, and we go into next season, and and it's not even that he's a big bad in next season. We just. Like you said, he just, just keeps vigil- showing up. He's just a guy. He's just a guy. <laughs> He's just a, you create a world where these things happen now, but Ollie. Some guy a bitch is gonna get like in his head, I can be a hero too. What if they never name him? They take down Prometheus, they figure out that Green Arrow's a good guy, and he kills himself, and we never see his face. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Again, I'm I'm still I'm still wondering if he's not the real Adrian Chase since we know Adrian Chase isn't a real isn't his isn't isn't Adrian Chase's real name, you know. That's a great twist. You know what if he's, he's like I am Adrian Chase, <laughs> you know, and I'm just some guy. Very, 
worthwhile. And I'm just and I'm just some guy, you know. <laughs> so, oh man, yeah, man. Like the the the, the vigilante thing is now. Guy. Why are you after pre- Why are you after Adrian? Adrian Chase? That asshole stole my name. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> man, like I said, I'm I'm I. I now care about Vigilante, and he wasn't even in this fucking... He's barely been in any of the episodes, right? He's only been in, like, like three episodes. episodes. Right? It's like... And he's not the... Now he's never been the main the guy. mystery of the season. Right. Who was behind that bike mask, <laughs> bike helmet? Right. right. With all this special tech that can do all this shit. Like, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Oh, man. And don't, don't let him be, like, you know, the real Asian chase from, like... You know, Earth Two or something like that, or you know, like, there's so many poss- possibilities with this guy. I'm I'm all in for all of it. So, yeah, man. So, um, again, folks, there you guys have it. That is our Super Tuesday recaps for Legend of Tomorrow and Arrow. Um, you can find the rest of our recaps on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Search for Super Tuesday Recap. Um, go to MovieTrailerReviews.net or MTRNetwork.net. Um, this week is going to be the the Flash Dangerous. and Supergirl crossover with musical stuff that happens mm. and yeah yay right yeah okay <laughs> i'll be there i'll be there nobody said i had to be happy about it but i'll be there hey quick question no though joy. is 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 it is the flash episode part one and then and then the supergirl episode part two because i've been seeing the the the, the promos for supergirl it doesn't seem like they're they're tied to the musical episode so is I first... think it's just the the music episode is just the Flash episode. Oh, okay. But I think that the end of Supergirl ties into Flash. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it. Okay. I have, I, I know that. So, so the bad guy's been announced. So I kind of say it here. Yeah. It's the Music Meister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they. We've, we've... But the commercials don't promo him that much, but apparently he appears first in the Supergirl episode, and then it carries over into the Flash one. Okay, cool. I, I just need which to makes know... sense because you got to get them all in the same universe anyway. Yeah, 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 and, and that makes sense. I, I just needed to. I needed to um, know if I needed to cr- uh, uh, catch up or not. So um, I'm watching both just cause, but yeah, yeah, good yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see how many episodes I'm, am I back, and uh, I don't know how many episodes I'm back. I'm probably, probably a while. No, I'm like four episodes back. So maybe I'll watch. They're taking a week or two off. Yeah, they have. I, I was waiting for. I, I only know they take a, a break off when uh, Shannon and the Doctor don't send me an send me an episode, <laughs> send me a review. <laughs> so I was like, oh wait, oh, I must didn't come on break. Oh, must have been a break. I don't know that's what's going on. So um, yeah, but we'll be back next week. <laughs> talk about that, and we'll have Shannon and the Doctor on that will be joining us for that. And yeah, um, yeah so we'll, we'll have that, and we'll we'll be discussing that, and we'll see how it goes. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I will. I I won't be a curmudgeon. I will. I will try to be happy. Way to make that strong statement, Chris. Um, I'm sure I might not be. Where I'm sure I'm. I'm sure there's a possibility that I might not be. So, <laughs> I, I really, I really appreciate you going on a limb. For there's us, a so. strong like twenty twenty five percent chance that I might not, probably won't be that kind of guy. So. I might not ruin the podcast. I might not ruin the podcast. Like you won't, you won't just hear me going the grad going. <laughs> <sighs> Is something to say, Chris? No. <laughs> right. <sighs> <laughs> All right, folks. Until next time, we are out of here. Peace. <laughs>